In this video, we're going to talk about the key terms and concepts uh, as it relates to the stress management unit. Uh, first term we're going to look at is something called a stressor. Stressors. Um, these are anything uh, that can cause stress. It can be a positive or a negative thing. For example, uh, you might be uh, feeling stress from a, a problem you might be having with a friend or, or a breakup or something along those lines. Um, that can uh, be regarded as, as kind of a negative stress. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, or it can be positive. Um, the stress you feel before you uh, get ready to uh, uh, maybe have a game coming up or uh, you have a band performance or something like that. That type of stress is, is positive. So let's take a look at those two different kinds of stresses. Okay, distress uh, is, is related to pain, anxiety, sorrow, uh, acute physical or mental suffering, affliction, trouble, it's any, it's kind of a lot of negative things. If there's something negative going on um, that kind of needs to be dealt with and resolved, maybe you can resolve it, maybe you can't, maybe it's out of your control, uh, this is, is uh, this causes distress. It's important to note that this is why it's important to have things that you do, like exercise, like talking to friends uh, in a positive way, um, doing these things to, to help cope with distress, because it's just, it's a part of life uh, but knowing that it's part of life and knowing good ways to deal with it uh, can help you handle distress well. On the other hand, a positive kind of stress is eustress. Uh, eustress um, is positive because it helps you perform better on tasks. Um, I mentioned before, maybe you have a game or a performance coming up. Um, you wouldn't want to go into that flat. You'd want to have that kind of heightened sense of awareness. You'd want to have that, um, that kind of ready-to-go type mentality. And that's you stress. Um, you stress also is caused by um, getting a good grade on a test or something like that as well. <clears throat> uh, time management, uh, pretty straightforward. Time management is the uh, uh, use of productive scheduling to get the most done in a day. Um, this is a really big deal um, when just functioning in life, uh, especially when you go to college, especially when you become an adult, you're a professional, in family. Uh, so you're kind of learning how to do that now. So creating good time management uh, habits now uh, can be very critical to future, su future success in life. Uh, next is fight or flight response. Um, this is kind of, <clears throat> I mentioned that, uh, that sense you get when you um, are getting ready to, to maybe perform in band or, or you have a game or something like that. Um, fight or flight is kind of that, that uh, that nervousness, I guess, is a good way. Butterflies in your stomach that we get, um, which is a response to uh, to stimulus that stresses us out, and you either kind of stay and, and compete, uh, which is what you really want to do. Obviously, if you have that game or that competition, or you're overwhelmed by whatever it might be, and you you, you take flight, you run. Um, but it's it's very important to recognize that this is a very natural um, response to this type of stress and find ways to, to, uh, to be successful uh, when dealing with it. All right, one of the things that fight or flight response causes is adrenaline. Uh, it's actual uh, bodily substance, chemical released, um, that uh, gives you your, your body a burst of energy, makes you more aware of what's going on. Um, we've heard the term adrenaline rush. Um, a lot of times when you ride a roller coaster, you have that sensation of, of adrenaline rush. Um, and it's very, again, it's, it's there to, to help you um, to be successful. It's there to help you perform well in whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay, so let's take a look at a few different kind of mental disorders. Um, one of them is phobias. Uh, it's anxiety disorder related to, uh, related to or based on a specific object or situation. Uh, phobias are, are rational, right? You have a, a phobia of, of spiders. It, it's nothing wrong to... It's very normal to um, be afraid of spiders. If you see a spider, it's going to kind of shock you. This is irrational. This is an irrational fear of things. Um, and usually it's, it's fixated on an object. Um, I use spiders before that people can have phobias about uh, pretty much any, anything. Um, understanding that, recognizing it for what it is, whether it's a rational or an irrational fear, um, and handling it appropriately is important in, in dealing with phobias. Right, compulsion. Um, it's an unreasonable need uh, to need to behave a certain way. I have a, a picture here of a person washing their hands. Sometimes people who deal with obsessive compulsive is kind of what we're more familiar with. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, people 
feel the need to, to you know, they, they just wash their hands. Um, five minutes later, they feel this, this urge, this compulsion to go back and wash their hands again. Another five minutes later, and it kind of goes on and on like that. Um, it's, it's, again, just like phobias, it's irrational. There's nothing wrong with wanting to wash your hands. Um, the problem is when you can't control your, your need to, to continue to, to wash your hands, that, that it becomes a problem. Um, this, it's very treatable um, through uh, meeting with a psychiatrist or psych psychologist or whoever it might be, or some, a therapist, somebody to, to help you work through, through this problem. It's a very, very, very treatable uh, deal. But it is important to, to be aware of it. It is important to, if it's an issue, or you see somebody who has this issue, to, to make sure uh, you or they get help. That's a compulsion. Uh, amnesia, uh, it's a very sudden loss of memory. Um, amnesia, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it can be caused by several different things. Um, sometimes it's a hit to the head. Uh, sometimes it's a um, blood flow could, could impact, uh, blood flow of the brain could impact amnesia. Um, there's also um, other um, things that relate to memory loss, but amnesia kind of stands on its own in this, uh, in that it's a sudden, very sudden loss of memory. Um, anxiety. Um, anxiety kind of is uh, related to a lot of the different things we talked about. If you have phobia, if you have spiders, you're going to feel anxious about that. If you have this compulsion to, to wash your hands, you're always going to want to uh, go back and do that. Um, it's going to make you anxious. Um, but when we talk about anxiety in general, we're talking about this, this overwhelming um, uh, sense uh, that affects your mood, um, that affects uh, uh, just the way you, you just function in daily life. You're always anxious about whatever it might be. A person who deals with anxiety is always anxious about whatever, whatever might be going on, and, and it affects their life to the point where it makes it difficult for them to, to function. It impacts their, their ability to just live their life day to day. Um, so it's kind of a more extreme uh, type of thing. It's normal to feel anxious about things. Again, with all these things we're talking about, it's the overwhelming, the continuous, the, the, the not going away, the not being addressed uh, type of an issue. Um, again, it's very treatable. Uh, it's important to recognize this um, and, and to, to get the help that, that you need or a friend might need or, or whoever the, the subject might be that's dealing with anxiety. Uh, clinical depression, um, mental disorder, uh, this is a situation where a person uh, is overwhelmed by, by sadness, by a number of different emotions, um, and it really impacts their, their ability to function. Um, it, it, it's a treatable, uh, diagnosable disorder um, that with treatment can be addressed. Uh, sometimes people who suffer from clinical depression um, don't want to get out of bed. Now that's not the same as, you know, it's Monday morning and, and time for school and you don't want to get out of bed. It's, it's I don't want to deal with life so I'm just going to stay in bed uh, type, type of depression. Um, again, it is treatable um, and it is, uh, it is preventable, but it is also important to recognize this uh, and to, to make sure that person, whoever it might be, um, gets the help that they need. Okay, hypochondriac. Um, this is a person who... Uh, constantly thinks that they're sick from one reason or another. Um, I kind of like this picture because it's got that diagnosis on the computer there. Um, kind of Dr. Google, uh, the Googling symptoms and blowing things out of proportion and it's the worst case scenario. But it is a recognizable uh, mental disorder. Um, oftentimes, we, you know, somebody, you might have a buddy who say they're getting sick, you know, so quit being a hypochondriac, something like that. It is actual, actually a, a disorder that, that, that needs to be treated um, and can be treated. Okay, we talked about this uh, the other day with CHADS. Uh, this is the ACT acronym. Uh, a person, uh, you believe a person suicidal, uh, it's very important to ask, ask them what's going on, to care, which is to communicate to them and, you know, that, that you care about what's going on with them and to tell somebody. Uh, you know, we talked about this where a lot of times with, with friends, you know, if somebody tells you something in confidence, it's good to keep that in confidence, but this isn't one of those cases. You want to make sure that you let somebody know who can who can help the person. Um, because you might be the only person that they've communicated that to, and uh, if, if it's not known that there's a problem, the problem might not be addressed. So it's important to do that. And ACT is a really good way to kind of keep 
keep it simple in terms of helping the person who, who you think might be suicidal. Okay, two types of doctors here. We talked about a psychologist. A psychologist uh, can um, um, work in, in the field of, of working with uh, mental disorders, but there's also a psychiatrist, and the biggest difference is a psychiatrist can prescribe medicine. Um, they, um, they, they'll function the same way a psychologist might, they'll function the same way a therapist might, uh, where they might talk to the person about their, their problems, whatever might be going on. Uh, but they can also then prescribe uh, medication to, to treat the, the illness. Uh, a neurologist is somebody who uh, treats and performs uh, brain surgery. Um, they're, they're basically a scientist of the brain is the best way to look at it. Uh, they do perform brain surgery, but uh, neurologists also do a lot in the field of understanding just how the brain works, what impacts the brain. Um, any, anything in the same way a cardiologist might uh, might work with the heart, uh, study the heart. Uh, it's a field of medicine in which uh, doctors study the brain. Um, and this is.